in this lecture i will discuss about the root locus plot analysis and this root locus plot is very much important for the design of compensator in case of control system so uh, first of all we have to know what is root locus and why it is so important if you go through the lectures of the time domain analysis that means time response analysis so you can see the two types of response analysis was made one is transient response and another is steady state response so once you have uh, understood the transient and steady state behavior of the system you see that purely depends upon the locations of the roots right so this transient behavior and steady state behavior that means the tr tp percentage mp and ts and ess these are the parameters and if these parameters are normally depending upon that is basically you can see it as a function of closed loop pole locations closed loop pole locations means what first of all you have to get the open loop transfer function of the system from that you have to get the closed loop transfer function of the system that is your gs by 1 plus gs into hs normally hs is taken as 1 for unity feedback system so you get the closed loop transfer function you can write it like cs by rs where cs is your output and rs is your input now once you get this so how can you get the roots so roots means basically the poles these are the roots that means once you solve the characteristic equation what is this this is your characteristic equation 1 plus gs into ahs equal to 0 you can solve this and if you can solve this depending upon the order and the type of the system what will you get you will get the defined pole locations the values of s once you get the values of s from that you can have the idea where this is a uh, uh, under damp system what damp system or critically damp system so basically by seeing the pole locations either uh, the defined poles are real imaginary only imaginary uh, only real and all these values uh, so you get the system damping behavior that means under damping system or over damping system critically damping system what is or whatever you may you, you may get, uh, get so you basically get the damping ratio and uh, these are the factors which are directly related with this damping ratio that means uh, if you can say for example i can take one s plane this is our s plane this is our uh, real and imaginary axis now say the poles are located like this say there is a one pole uh, there may be another pole there may be another pole there may be another pole and there may be another pole like this like this the poles are located and uh, if uh, some way you have to get uh, the system parameter in such a way if the location of the pole can be varied right say for example if the pole is located here so maybe your damping uh, coefficient that means the parameter is not satisfied to your desired value you want the damping to be 0 0.707 so what you have to do you have to change these pole locations how can you change the pole locations this is very simple you can change the pole locations that means the location of the closed loop poles by varying simple the gain of the system you can just vary the gain this is your gain if you vary the gain then the locations of the poles will be varied location of pole varied and if the location of the pole can be varied so this can be varied to e in such a way such that you can de get your desired damping coefficients and once you can get the desired value of this then you can get the desired value of trtp percentage mp ts and yes so what is this desired 
I mean to see that uh, you want to get a system time response uh, parameters like rise time is equal to say 0 0.5 second, peak time 0 0.7 second, peak percentage overshoot uh, say 0.8 percent, accelerating time is say 2 second, and steady state error may be 0 for a step time of signal. If these are the specifications, so definitely uh, this will give you when your specification meets the JAI. And once this JAI is to be met, that means your pole locations must have to be varied. And these pole locations can be varied with the variation of the gain of the system. Right? So once the gain is varied from 0 to infinity, then actually the locations of the closed loop poles, that means uh, the roots of the system is varied and you get a locus. Locus means what? Locus means the roots are following certain path on the S plane. So that is known as the root locus and that is how it is related with the transient and steady state response uh, parameters of the system. Uh, in order to have the basic concept of the root locus uh, plot, we will consider a position, simple position control system. A, we will consider one one position control system. Example of one position control system. Let us take one plot diagram like this is your RS. This is your the elements of position control system that is your one kind of power amplifier is used this is your k this is the transfer function of a servo motor this is your output cs and this is your Feedback. Now, uh, this is your forward path uh, transfer function. So, you know uh, all about this forward path transfer function. Uh, this is your forward path transfer function. Now, uh, you can write like gs equal to your ky is into x plus 2. Right? This is the just one prediction and h is here is equal to 1 that is your UP feedback. Now, once you get the closed loop transfer function from the OPG of transfer function, so Cs by Rs will be simple Gs by 1 plus Gs into Hs. So, what is this? This is actually your Ky. If you just simplify it, you get S into x plus 2 plus k. That means Ky s squared plus 2s plus k. So, S square plus 2 is k is the characteristic equation, right? This is your characteristic equation. That means, uh, if you solve this, this is a, you see this is a second order system. So, there will be two poles, right? Initially, if you find out the poles, so just solve it. S will be equal to minus 2 plus minus root over B squared means 4 minus 4 AC 4 K by 2 that is minus 2 plus minus root over 2 1 minus k by 2 so you get the two poles s1 say equal to minus 1 plus root over 1 minus k and s2 equal to minus 1 minus root over 1 minus k right so these are the two pole locations we get uh, from here this is one pole this is your second pole. You see, these are the two pole locations which are actually related with the gain. So, this is your gain. So, gain is gain. Now, in order to get the addition of the poles, what I have told you? I have told you that if the value of gain is added, say k is equal to 0 to infinity. That means, if you vary this gain k 0 to infinity, definitely you see from here this s1 and s2 will be changed or will be changing okay now k is equal to 0 means you will be having s1 and uh, s2 two values k is equal to say 2 
uh, you will be having defined values k is equal to 1 you will be having defined values like this so how this possibility changed with the changing values of k is equal to 0 to infinite uh, that means when you are uh, changing the this power amplifier gain k so how the roots are changing that uh, we will uh, actually see uh, right so s1 and s2 only these two pole locations are uh, given to us now we will vary the gain and how this pole location should be changed that is our uh, concern that is s1 is equal to minus 1 plus root over 1 minus k and s2 is equal to minus 1 minus root over 1 minus k now we consider k equal to 0 initial value of k is equal to 0 okay uh, so what we get the value of s1 is like minus 1 plus root over 1 minus 0 that is minus 1 plus 1 0 okay and s2 is equal to minus 1 minus 1 minus 0 minus 1 minus 1 minus 2 so what are the two pole locations you see one is at 0 one is at minus 2 these are the closed loop pole locations so these are the closed loop poles at k equal to 0 now Remember the transfer function, open loop transfer function. Open loop transfer function, g s equal to s into s plus 2. So, what are the pole locations of the open loop system? This is your open loop system. So, pole locations, s is equal to 0 and s is equal to minus 2. Right? So, uh, can you get the similarity between these two? Yes. What is that? When the value of k is equal to 0, if you put the value of k is equal to 0 in closed loop system, you get the positions of the poles similar to that of the position of the poles of the open loop system. That means if you just plot like this real and imaginary and this is your s is equal to 0 on the s plane and this is equal to s is equal to minus 2. That means these are the pole locations of the closed loop system right we are dealing with the closed loop poles variation so if these are the closed loop the closed loop pole positions these are nothing but equal to the open loop pole positions when k equal to g that means you can write like this so at k is equal to 0 closed loop poles are similar to that of the open loop poles so uh, actually during the root locus uh, i will uh, discuss that there is no need to find out the closed loop poles of a system because uh, in some uh, system maybe third order maybe fourth order maybe fifth order uh, you can see uh, that the findings of the pole locations for the fifth order system or fourth order system is very difficult so what we have to do we have to find out the open loop poles and place that on the s plane and in that value put k is equal to 0 so this will give you the initial value of the closed loop poles right so now next part is that we will increase the value of k so k say less than 1 greater than g right we are slightly increasing the value of power amplifier k k so maybe within this limit we can take the value of k equal to 5.5 for the simplification of our uh, calculation so what is the value of s1 then s1 will be equal to minus 1 plus root over 1 minus 0 0.5 and s2 equal to minus minus 0 0.5 right so this is minus 1 plus root over of 0.5 and this s2 is equal to minus 1 minus 0 0.5 right you see these two values this is minus 1 plus root over 0 0.5 this is minus 1 minus root over 0 0.5 right but this may be nearly approximate to 0.7 so if this we can take it 0.7 so minus 1 plus 0 0.7 and this is minus 1 minus 0 0.7 see this is equal to minus 0 0.3 this is minus 1.7 what is you are getting that similar to that minus 1 plus 0 0.7 as much as this value is added with this minus 1 
तो सेकेंड पोल लोकेशन इज लाइक दिस सेम वैल्यू इज सब्रैक्टेड फ्रॉम दिस माइनस वन सो इफ यू पोर्ट दिस वैल्यूज ऑन द योर एस प्लेन नाउ एट के इज इगल टू जीरो पॉइंट फाइव दैट मीन्स सर्टन वैल्यू इज इंक्रीज सो वट आर द पोल लोकेशन दिस इज माइनस जीरो पॉइंट थ्री सो हियर माइनस जीरो पॉइंट थ्री इज समेयर लाइक दिस दिस इज एस इज इगल टू माइनस जीरो पॉइंट थ्री एंड दिस इज माइनस वन पॉइंट सेवन सो दिस इज माइनस वन पॉइंट सेवन राइट सो वट यू सी दैट दिस पोल एक्चुअली ओपन लुक पोल एंड एस इज इक्वल टू माइनस टू दिस इज एक्चुअली मूविंग दिस डिरेक्शन सी एंड द पोल एट एस इज इक्वल टू जीरो इज मूविंग दिस डिरेक्शन एलॉन्ग दिस पाथ राइट सो वेन द के इज वेरिड सी दिस इज दिस पोल इज मूविंग दिस डिरेक्शन एंड दिस पोल इज मूविंग दिस डिरेक्शन नाउ द नेक्स्ट केस Uh, we will consider the value of k equal to say one, right? Slightly again increasing the value of k. So k is equal to we will take at one. So case three we will consider k is equal to one. Then what is the value of s one? You see, put the value of this. This is minus one plus zero, and s two is equal to minus one minus zero minus one minus one. So you get the two pole locations where only the real values are here. These are the Real and equal. Can you remember the uh, criteria when the two poles of a closed loop system are uh, real and equal? Well, that I will discuss. No problem. So, see these two pole locations uh, of the closed loop system are at minus one. So, what is the location? Uh, is minus one. Next, see uh, this is your s is equal to minus one. That means this pole has moved to this position. This pole has moved to this position, right? So in the same direction, the poles is moving. The poles are moving, and poles have arrived at these positions on the real axis, right? Now, again, we are increasing the value k greater than one. So that may be treated as two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, infinity. Thus, that we can conclude that the value of the k is varied from zero to infinite. So k is greater than one. S one equal to minus one plus root over one minus say k equal to two. Two and s two equal to minus one minus one minus two. So within these two, this is imaginary. So minus plus j one. S two is equal to minus one minus j one. But we we'll get these are the two poles which are complex and conjugate to each other. This is minus one plus j one. This is minus one minus j one. So these are the uh, pole locations, two pole locations which are complex conjugate to each other. That means when the value of k is increased above one, what happens? These pole locations are not confined in the real axis. They have moved to the imaginary axis. Like this, so this is your uh, imaginary axis values. So you can get the pole location somewhere like this, right? So this is your. Uh, uh, that means you can see this is the direction of one pole, and you see the direction of the path of the other pole. So uh, what can I uh, conclude from this graph? You see, starting from the Uh, your open loop gain, sorry, uh, this uh, gain, yes, uh, this gain k is equal to zero, and these were the pole locations on the real axis or whatever. Now, when the k is moving or increasing, then the poles is moving towards this direction, and these poles is moving towards this direction. Now, there is a pole, there is a position on the real axis where they will meet, and finally they leave the real axis. They leave the real axis. They will move to the imaginary axis like this. And if you see the value of k is equal to four, so this is j j three, this is j three. So that means this pole is moving like this direction, and this pole is moving like this direction. So we get the two branch, or in other words, uh, you can say the two branching. Like uh, this is one branching, one branch of the pole is moving in this direction. Uh, that means one branch of the root locus. and this is your second branch is moving in this direction 
so uh, this is how the locations of the poles are varied with the variation of the gear right now how this variation of the uh, poles uh, with the variation of the k gives you certain time domain specifications right and how it can be depending upon uh, the value of j that i am going to i am already obtained now i will summarize it like this first of all you take 1 mm graph in the millimeter graph you take this x axis is the real axis and y axis is your imaginary axis now scaling of the uh, this millimeter graph is very important scaling and what uh, this scaling means scaling means say this is your origin no problem uh, and this is definitely you will write at this plane now this is say your one division this is minus 1 in the negative axis so this is minus 2 this is minus 3 this is minus 4 and so on similarly this is plus 1 plus 2 plus 3 and so on and this length see if this uh, larger length uh, that is uh, a box is taken as minus 1 similarly the same value here in the y axis and the millimeter graph you will take it this plus j1 right if this length is 1 so this length is similar to 1 so this is j1 this is j2 j3 and so on similar to here minus j1 minus j2 minus j3 and so on so equal division is important and uh, always whenever you will uh, go to uh, draw the rule lucas plot uh, you i am not uh, taking this i am just showing you showing you the example you take this uh, larger value as one right uh, that means two uh, larger divisions you can take at one right this should be one this should be minus 2 and minus 3 and so on here uh, the, due to the space restriction i am showing this is minus 1 so you take the larger division to get the curve more clear right so uh, this is all about the scale now uh, what uh, i was discussing about is that uh, the uh, system was given gs equal to ky s into s plus 2 so that is a position control system transfer function and when the value of k was varied but uh, we have obtained initially the poles are, and and one thing is that uh, the poles are represented by cross and zeros are represented by circle so here the two poles one it s is equal to 0 one is at s is equal to minus 2 and uh, you, you see uh, the value of k at this is equal to 0 that is very much important and if you miss this k is equal to 0 during drawing of the rule lucas plot so your rule lucas plot is not valid because actually you are varying the gain k starting from 0 to infinity and you see uh, when the value of gain k is increasing this pole is moving this direction and this pole is moving in this direction and they have met at the value minus 1 at is equal to minus 1 on the real axis now after meeting this positions when again you have increased the value of gain k what happened this this one branch that means the one pole is moving in this direction and one pole is moving in this direction and finally this is the kind of rule locus now uh, details of the rule locus i will discuss in detail uh, now the thing is that how this rule locus is related with the Uh, time response specifications and already i have discussed this time response specifications uh, specifications function of j that is the damping uh, coefficient and see uh, we know the damping angle what is damping angle damping angle is theta and we know this cost of theta is equal to j right say for example say for example in any case we will consider a system to be such that the damping ratio is 0.707 this is our design damping ratio right this is our design criteria right if damping ratio is 0.707 is to be set then the value of cos of theta is equal to 0.707 and the theta will be equal to 45 degree 
and what is the value of this theta and how can it be drawn to see from the last uh, transient response or time domain specifications we have discussed that this theta is like this say on the origin you make it angle theta right and say this will be your theta or I will use this uh, uh, light to differentiate between this two so this angle measure in this direction that means in clockwise direction on the horizontal axis you get this is 45 degree right when this angle is 45 degree see this line touches the value uh, that means this graph at this position this is your say d point right so how can you find and at this d position what is the value of s because what is this basically locus this grill line this grill line means this is the locus that means in every word you will get the value of s certain value of s and now i have to get the pole locations that is closed loop pole locations that means you have to find out the value of s on this locus such that the uh, j becomes 0 0.707 and j becomes 0 0.707 means the theta becomes 45 degree so you get this locations now see this is 45 degree and this is your minus 1 so this actually the point d the point d see the point d in the complex plane that means real plus imaginary it is having two values the real part is minus 1 and imaginary part we have to find out right so in our value of s at d at d we, we have to uh, get the imaginary value because we know the real part is minus 1 so this is 45 degree see tan of 45 degree equal to 1 right so this means this is imaginary by real from the triangle this is right angle triangle see this is right angle triangle and this 45 degree means this by this right this is your imaginary part so real part is 1 so imaginary part must be 1 right this is imaginary by 1 this is 1 minus 1 so the magnitude is 1 so you get this value is 1 so basically what is the location this is j8 j1 this is j1 right so at these positions what is the value of closed loop ports so s is equal to minus 1 plus j1 fine what will get the pole locations so from this uh, kind of rule locus you get the pole locations if the value of uh, pole is at s is equal to minus 1 plus j1 then the j will be 0 0.707 got it so the value of s is equal to minus 1 plus j1 in this position you get the damping angle is equal to 45 degree once you get the damping angle 45 degree you get the damping ratio 0 0.707 and once you get the damping ratio 0 0.707 so time response parameters tr tp percentage of p ts all the parameters will be uh, actually based upon this and you get the desired specification now what is the value of k you see this is minus 1 plus j1 right so uh, if you get uh, the uh, actual uh, generalized pole locations minus 1 plus due to what 1 minus k we are considering this is your positive side so similar to that in the next classes we will see this is complex conjugate to same position this can be taken as minus 45 degree and uh, you see this is your positive part so minus 1 plus of j1 when this will be j1 j means the imaginary part will be coming out and in that case the value of k must be greater than 1 and if the value of k is equal to 2 see if the value of k if the value of k is equal to 2 this s is equal to what is the value of s s is equal to minus 1 plus j1 okay so if the value of s is equal to minus 1 plus j1 that is the this is the closed loop pole locations you want to get you have to get the value of k is equal to 2 and you see again the value of k is varying like uh, here the value of k is equal to 0 
here the key of uh, value of k is equal to uh, 1 and now the value of k is increasing and in this positions the value of k equal to sorry 2 right so if you adjust the power amplifier gain of the uh, DC servo motor position control system then you get the desired spool locations at S is equal to minus 1 plus J1 and corresponding to that you get the desired damping angle and corresponding to that desired the damping ratio corresponding to that the system response steady state response steady state error tangent S1 and all these parameters right so uh, this is uh, the, the way how the rule locus plot is related to this time response domain and the rule locus plot are done by adding the value of k is equal to 0 to k is equal to infinity right now uh, in the uh, next uh, lecture i will discuss how to uh, uh, draw the Bode diagrams uh, sorry this is a rule locus plot uh, for any kind of system maybe uh, type 1 maybe uh, first order maybe second order or whatever by uh, defined uh, rules uh, by applying defined rules and uh, the defined kinds of uh, rules are there to plot the rule locus very simple and calculations one is to understand and uh, then certain point uh, kind of uh, see common sense is required to draw the graph right and in order to draw the uh, graph uh, the two criteria are there uh, one is called the magnitude criteria one is called the uh, your uh, phase criteria uh, 